show you reverence to the, the deity and the priest. back to our seats. Uh, what we just did is a whole prayer on its own. You put your authority and your team uh, and authority on the two subjects. So we give in for five minutes. We give us something small. And uh, if you want to get deeper into it, then let me know. Then I will invite him over for you to talk to him more. All right? So I hope Abla is for Abla. Abla is a Tuesday born. And uh, his son name is Monibe, so he has a whole lot, it's a volume of knowledge on religion. So thank you, Kukura, for making time for my senior brother. Well, okay, thank you, my senior brother. First of all, let me welcome you all to the land of peace. Um, as my senior brother has said, life is about learning. So I'm just not going to waste much time. I'm going to go into something brief that will put or will connect us to our ancient past and why we are here today. Now, I want this to be an interactive discussion. I don't want it to be one-sided. So those with phones, you know, we may try to goggle one or two things, you know, just to get some information. But we'll do it briefly so that uh, we can, you know, get a clear picture of what we are saying. I believe before you get to this land called Clico, you might do a little research or finding about this land. So the name Clico. Someone may ask, what is the name Clico? 
where does it originated from? Where from, where, where, where from that lake? Well, I want to do a connection. Our ancestors did not migrate from Togo or Benin presently or Nigeria, but they migrated from a once lost continent. So when you read a book by uh, Churchill or Churchworth, The Lost Continent of Moon, that is where our ancestors migrated from. Now, when they migrated, they went and built a settlement in the present day land of Turkey. So those who have been to Turkey before, there is a place that the archaeologists have found, and it is called Go, Go, Be, Be, the Fung. So those with poles, those with poles, I would like you to to Google this name in particular. Google. That is how it is spelled. Google. And let's see where it is located. In which country. Then I will explain what Kli is. And why, why this land is called Kli. Has anyone gotten some answers about the name Gogbe? Kli, Tepe. So as the search is on, when our ancestors left that place, they came to build a settlement. And as part of the settlement, they built a temple for the god of Kli. Kli is the god of science. In our cosmology. So when you see the name Kli, it means the god of science. In our ever philo cosmology. In the ancient past, you may wonder why, how our ancestors managed to, to do great stuff. Because they were able to go deep into this energy, to tap into that wisdom, to do so many things. So the temple that was found in Turkey was named by our ancestors as what? Gobert, Kitefer. That is it. So now, on this land that we are today, what is it called? Kli Ko. Now, when you are coming from the main road, there is another powerhouse just like this place. It is called Kli Shrine. Please, is the name Kli different from what we've seen here, the spelling is the same. There's no difference. So when our ancestors migrated all the way through the Nile Valley, what is now known as what? Babylon. Our ancestors referred to it as what? Ajatum in our ever Palo language. Ajatum, and that is where the Amu. Now listen, let's pay attention carefully. That is where the Amu, Rabba quotes, was given. The Amu, Rabba quotes, was given. This name has been corrupted to as what? Amurabi. But the name itself is Amu, Rabba. Who is a Rabba? 
I believe as you are here, you're going to study so many things. In our divination or in our affair process, there are several levels, about six or seven titles, levels. The highest you can reach is what? Rabba. So, the man who was then known as what? Amu Rabba has reached that level and could bring out the knowledge. So it is the life code that he brought that was used to build what our ancestors referred to as a gentleman, which, um, let me say, the dress code, I'm going to go deep into So please, those with their phone, senior, if anyone has a phone, we're going to go into it. So now let's identify three things. One is the blue. Two is the blue cloth which he is still wearing. Then the the golden thread. Here, three things. So we are going to read from the Bible to find out whether what he is wearing is biblical or is evil or demonic. So we go to Exodus. Chapter 28, verse 31. Please, if anyone opens it, he can read it for us so that we can all hear it. I don't want just to mention the verses alone. That is Exodus chapter 28, verse 31. No, even they can go, it, it will be easy when they go. go. I, I'll pull it up. Yes, they can. They can. I want us to prove it by reading it ourselves. Exodus chapter 28, verse 31. You found it? Um, hold on. Yes, I got it. Who find it? Okay, can you read it out? <laughs> Make the robe of the. Ephod entirely of blue cloth. Say it again. Make the robe of Ephod entirely of blue cloth. Make the cloth, the cloth of what? Ephod. Ephod of entirely what? Blue cloth. What is he wearing? Excuse me, with all due respect, does the Pope wear something like that? Does the Islamic or whatever they call him, says, do they wear something like that? But yes, still, they have the audacity to describe our people who are doing the right thing as evil and demonic. Let's proceed. So now, we are done with the cloth of blue. So now we go to the second one. The Ashi, the golden thread. That is Exodus chapter 39, verse 3. Exodus. Exodus chapter 39, verse 3. Let's read the golden track. Is that it? Yes, 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 roll it. Uh, they hammered out thin sheets of gold and cut strands to be worked into the blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine linen, the work of skilled hands. Repeat it again so that everyone take your time and just read it word after word. I want everyone to get the picture clear. They hammered out thin sheets of gold. They hammered out a thin sheet of gold. Okay. And, and cut strands to be worked into the blue, okay. purple, and scarlet yarn. Thank you. What you see, what they are trying to describe in the scriptures is what you see they are wearing. It looks like gold. The color looks like gold, but it is done with the, the artisan, a work of a hand that was put together. But you see, once again, here we are. People who don't understand this describe it as negative. Now let's proceed to the final one because we don't have time. Because I would have even liked to touch on the tablets with what is called the tablet in the Bible and find out whether we still hold it here. Yes, 
The tablet will still do it here when it's time for us to go to the sacred forest. We still carry the tablet and we go with it. Yeah, is it? You can see it here. So let's go ahead with the. Please, can, let's go to Isaiah chapter 14, verse 3. Let's look at the broom, this broom. This broom. Okay, I have the, even the, yes, Isaiah. There's something called the broom of destruction. As we can see in our previous picture, the picture, you can see the priest was, is holding it. Okay, but I just took it out to make it clear so that everyone can get the picture. So, if anyone has opened, but if it's not, I think I have it. Uh, no, but I would like our brother to do the reading for us so that it do not look like I'm the one who inserted it there. Okay. 1423, Isaiah? Yes, yes. I will turn her into a place for owls and into swampland. I will sweep her with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord Almighty. Declares the Lord Almighty, the Lord of hosts. Yes, the broom of destruction, uh, destruction, that is how it is described in the Bible. When we are, there's a period, let's say, between July ending to first week of August. When you come here, there's no space to put your, even to stand. We all congregate and move in a procession to the sacred forest. So when we are, when we are going, our chief high priest, as you can see in the picture, holds the broom of destruction. What does it do? What, what is it used for? On the way, they hold it. So when there is any negative energy approaching, it neutralizes it. That is the purpose of this broom. But the only people who can explain this to you are the people who practice, who practice it. So this has been with us for, for thousands of years. For thousands of years. Okay? So there's not much time. Maybe we'll find another time when we meet, we're going to go deep into it. Then we're going to discuss about the tablet and other African spirituality that are, can be found. And based upon my research, about 60% of the what, uh, what, about 60% of the Old Testament is full of African spirituality. About 60%, the divination that we do here, that we call Fa or Efa or Ifa, in the Bible, because it has been translated about into about five to six different languages, they now describe the Afa in the Bible as what? Tumin or Tomin. It is spelled uh, T H U double M I N. Tomin. That is, if someone can Google it, yes. That is how our Ifa, then we have what we call what? The Hochi. Hochi Kaka. The Hochi is what we describe, uh, the English describe as what? The cowards. So when you Google the meaning of the Yurimin, that the, the Yurimin, Hochi is what they describe in the Bible as what? The Yurimin in the Bible. And the Yurimin is spelled R. No, U R I M. And the Tomim is spelled T H U M double M I N. So when you Google this thing, Google, they will tell you the dictionary and Google will tell you that there are two instruments or things that were used by the ancient high priest to find the will of God. So you can see you cannot just go into a building and just praying and you want to seek the will of God. There is a process to everything. So folks, um, I know today your day is packed. So I will end it here so that um, when there's another time, we'll find time and go deep into that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You are not gone yet. Do you have any questions to ask?
because this is an yes. educa you educational have any course. Yes. Do you have any questions? One or two. Do you have any questions? Uh, we With regards to the Bible or anything. Yes. So is the Old Testament based on your ancestors? That's a good question. Like I'm trying to figure out. Um, Africans read the Bible and then did they follow it, or is it the other way around? Was it written about you? Yes, um, that's a very good question. But let me answer you this way. Before we have what we have today as the Bible, it was not the way it, it used to be. Our ancestors used to write them on the papyrus scroll. Just like when you do divination, the chief priest or the chief, the priest who does the divination writes everything down. The same thing that took place in the Old Testament. So when we have what we call the dufakaka. Dufakaka is like when, like doing a divination for an entire nation or a town or a village. So all these things were recorded in our ever pilo language. So every civilization that came translated this knowledge into their system. So when the Assyrians took over the world, they translated it into their language. So when you Google the Urimid and the Tumi, the origin, it will take you back to the Assyrian, Assyrian side. Then to Babylonian. Babylonian Empire also came. They also translated the patient empire. So many empires came and they translated it. So today, what we have now, it is not as original as it is. So yes, to answer your question, it's not everything that we see in the New Testament is the perfect translation. Now, again, when our ancestors left that lost continent of Mu. Some went far into the Indians, the, India, the lands today they call the India, Japan, China. So when our ancestors, those who are well versed in the spirituality, they were known as what? The Nagasachi or the Nagasachiao. So when you go to India, those who are well versed in spiritual matters are called the Nakas. It was our ancestors, they took those knowledge. So you can see this energy or this, our shrine here in the Indian, Indian, when we call it, there's a place we call what? Togbi Ganach, like Ganach, Vodou. In the Indian language, they describe us what? Ganesha. The god of thunder, lightning, and fire, we have it here. In India, they have it. The Greeks also what? They all have it. But the Greeks fix it up in Kama, in ancient Egypt. So most of all these things were picked from one angle and it was spread throughout the world. That is why you see there's one thing, there's another. I don't know whether you, you'll be going to those, some of those places. For instance, let me talk about the Islamic religion. The question is, the question was asking is, did we derive what you are talking about as a dress code of the tree from the Bible, or it has been something which has been part of this? No, it has been part of this. They copied it rather from us. Oh, the Every, Bible is actually, the Bible, the Old Testament, is part of our spiritual literature before it was translated into several languages. So, before it spread all this, thing. so you can see. I've mentioned earlier on, whether the popes wear the same thing. He said, no. The chief imam, they don't wear all these things. But we as the original people, or those who have that knowledge system, are still practicing it. I don't know if I've answered your question. So, any other questions? What the priests wear, do they also dictate like what the people who come to see the shrine wear? Or is that from a different text or from an oral tradition? Can you repeat the question again? So, so we talked about how the priest wears the blue and okay. gold, all based on the Bible. Yes. Does the Bible also dictate like what the people that come to visit the shrines wear, like the cloth? Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
You see, wherever the shrine is, it's a sacred ground. So whoever is coming here, this, that's the dress code. We don't allow people to come close without wearing food because you may walk at certain places and you may step on certain things that are not plain. So that is why you have to leave your slippers outside before you, you come close to this place because we see it as sacred. So when you go to the scripture, as they say, when they say Moses appeared in the burning bush, he took off his sandals. It's a sacred ground. So that is all it is. So when you are coming to every places, like sacred places, it is advisable. And this is not only practiced here. If you go to India, they do the same thing. If you go to uh, Japan and all those people who practice something similar to ours, they also practice uh, the same thing. Yes. So I hope I've answered your question. Okay. My dear sister, do you have any questions? All right. But maybe in the evening or sometimes if there is a time, you can find time and do more. Uh -huh. But for now, uh, if there is no more questions, You explained everything really nicely. I like the connection you made from the Bible and so like how everybody views it as like uh, uh, people and stuff. But it says it in the Bible. Everything that you do basically comes from the Bible. It's practical. We are practicalizing it. So that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you.